Hi, my name is Bing Bao. I'm a software engineer from Meta. And it's my pleasure to talk about AOT Inductor today. So it's a head of time compilation for PT2 exported models. And this, is, uh, this presentation is co-authored with my colleague, uh, Yang Chen, who's also here today. So earlier uh, in the, uh, uh, this morning, you heard from my colleague, Mark, who's trying to persuade you that uh, using Python for inference is all you need. So maybe we'll get there one day, but uh, there are some te technical difficulties we need to solve before we re reach there. So uh, for reasons like this, right? For example, the comparing to training, like the inference side, uh, actually the, uh, the hardware can be quite uh, diverse in terms of uh, capability. And it's not always the case you have a strong server with a very powerful GPU to run your model inference, right? And, and in some cases, even you have the, a server to run your inference uh, for reasons like maybe you want a more predictable runtime uh, performance. So people may choose the reason not to uh, deploy use Python. So in reality, we do have the choice of to deploy a model using Python or not using Python. So here is uh, why we built AOT inductor for. Like, uh, in the case of that like, you choose to not use Python for your uh, inference deployment, then you can use this uh, AOT inductor as a solution. Uh, earlier also, uh, you have heard from Yanan that uh, torch export is a way to export your model into a, a kind of a whole graph representation. And so that comes uh, uh, AOT inductor, right? What, what it is, it is a special mode of torch inductor, which takes torch export it graph as an input and compile it, compile it into a deployable artifact for inference. So in the rest of the talk, I'm going to dive a little bit deeper into the technical details of AOT inductor, mostly in two parts, the compiler part and its runtime part. So here I took this slide from last year's uh, Torch inductor tutorial. Uh, it's a uh, as a quick recap of inductors stack, and also trying to highlight like, what we need to handle differently for AOT inductor. Like, don't try to read every words here, but uh, you know, as uh, roughly speaking from left to right, it's, uh, it's the order of the uh, torch inductor different components. Uh, the, the, the one on the left is uh, think of as uh, doing like uh, input normalization and also after that, we have IR lowering and we do optimizations. And towards the end, we have code generation. Right? So think about a stack and comparing to the default JIT mode, what do we need to build differently for AOT inductor? Right? Here, inputs is different. It's coming from torch export. Uh, well, but uh, largely speaking, speaking, it's still similar to, to what we have seen uh, received from, uh, as a JIT mode. There are some uh, tech, like, uh, implementation, implementation details differences I won't get into uh, in this talk. So roughly speaking, input stays the same. And for the lowering and compiler optimizations, there's no reason we should not reuse those. Right? So it gives us the, the, all the performance benefit from the current default JIT inductor. So we really try to reuse those. But when it comes to code gen part, we have two parts. Uh, one is called a wrapper code gen. It's generating all those outer code that does things like a card kernel, allocate buffer, and those kind of things. Currently, in the default mode, it's generating a Python code for that. And also, we have backend code gen. And we have two, uh, actually, two backends. One can generate a Trident code for GPU. One can generate C++ for CPU. Uh, if you think about AOT inductor, because we are getting rid of uh, Python in the picture. So we cannot simply reuse the, uh, this current default code gen. We have to do something different, which I will explain uh, in later through an example. And also keep in mind that we have uh, two backends which can work both for CPU and GPU. And in this, through this talk, I'm going to use the GPU side as an uh, example. But uh, the same story applies for CPU. 
so when we actually change the inductor's uh, code gen part, we do have this uh, very important design principle in mind, which is we try to reuse the JIT inductor as much as possible. Not only that gives us uh, all the optimizations for free, but also it reduces uh, the chances to make uh, mistakes. Right? So it makes like a verification, verification and bring up much easier. Next, uh, I'm going to explain like what the JIT, JIT inductor is going to generate as uh, its wrapper code and kernel code, and what actually the AOT inductor will generate uh, differently. Say this uh, model, it takes uh, forward, it forward, its forward function takes two inputs, x and y, and then uh, it does sign operation on x, and then a model, and then doing uh, cosine and returns the result. So in the JIT inductor mode, it's going to generate the Triton code, let's say for the first operation, which is sign, right? So it's gonna generate uh, the Triton code, something like this. Uh, and again, uh, don't, uh, don't read too much into the like, actual line by line, but the idea is like, that like, in the default inductor, it's gonna generate a Triton code. It's not a C++ or anything, like you can just AOT compile. And then for the Python part, uh, again, for the default uh, mode inductor, right? So it does things like oh, well, ma manage uh, CUDA streams and allocate temporary buffers through things like empty threaded and invoke the Trident kernel you just saw for the sign operation. And also remember there was a multmo after that, then uh, we actually the, the generated code is going to call it as an external kernel. And also it does things like uh, reuse buffers through uh, buffer uh, manage memory management. So all those things are done in Python. Uh, in order to make it AOT ahead of time compile, we we actually change all those into C++ instead. And luckily we have uh, like all those Python operations, almost all of them are backed by some kind of uh, C++ implementation in Py PyTorch. So now this is what AOT inductor will give you. So for example, if you uh, remember earlier, you saw the stream uh, management, so we can still do that in C++. And I'm gonna uh, skip the kernel part for now, but uh, also like if you look at things like Mautmo, you can just call it uh, through C++, and also uh, for, for buffer uh, resetting, you can do the same. And for the kernels, remember we were generating tridents uh, in, in the default mode, right? So now what we do is we uh, utilize that trident code, but uh, ahead of time compile it into the actual uh, uh, the cubing files, and we save, save those results kernels as cubing files. And then we generate a code to load those uh, CUDA kernels at runtime. And actually generate, also generate code to launch those CUDA kernels at runtime, as you can see highlighted here. So that's what we uh, do in the compiler part. We, we just compile everything, your model, export it, and then compile it into C++, and we call C++ compiler to compile it into a shared library. Now let me talk about a uh, little bit about the runtime part. So just simply giving you a .so may, may not be sufficient uh, enough for your actual deployment. We also took ideas from AI templates, uh, runtime design, and we designed this runtime for AOT inductor, which it does things like uh, multi-threaded models serving. So it does have a uh, a thread pool that can run multiple instances, uh, instances of the just compiled AOT uh, compiled model. And then those models can share uh, all those weights because uh, for inference, all the weights are, are constant and there's no point to make a duplication of those, those weights. All those should really be shared. And in the case of uh, GPU, we also leverage CUDA streams to, to increase uh, uh, concurrency. So when you have uh, different instances of your model, each of them can run a different CUDA streams. So now let's look at an example, like how would you actually use it, right? Like uh, it's because it's ahead of time compilation. So in the Python part, you just call something uh, like torch underscore export dot uh, AOT compile feeding with your model, with your uh, example inputs, 
And you also can uh, specify things like uh, you know, which dimension is dynamic, and also you can pass in different uh, uh, compiler torch uh, inductor opt uh, options. So after that, you should get a, a sh compiled library. The compiler library will contain the compiler model and also the runtime I just uh, was talking about. And then, uh, in the, supposedly, like you want to deploy your model in a C++ environment. What you can do is uh, we actually provided a utility class that can help you to load the uh, compile.so file, and then uh, you can just simply run it uh, like the example here, feeding your inputs, and it will give you the outputs. So how about the performance? Right? Let's look at some numbers here. So similarly to, to previous talks, this number is taken from our open source uh, the, the dashboard, performance dashboard. It's an inference number with static shapes, uh, also evaluated on the three uh, benchmark suites we have been using. So if you look at the pass rate, uh, on Hugging Face and Team, we're, we have reached like over 90% uh, passing rate. It's a little bit lower on the Torchbench side, and because of the, di you know, the diversity of its uh, model architecture. And also, um, worth to pointing out that uh, when we uh, compute the, the, the pass rate for Torchbench, we have excluded those uh, benchmarks with dynamic control flow, which we cannot support uh, just with export right, at that moment. So I also listed the uh, GeoMe speedup, and as a comparison, I listed the default JIT inductor speedup, uh, both over eager. So as you can see, uh, AOT inductor does provide better performance. Uh, mostly coming from the fact that we have removed Python from the picture. Uh, again, for torch match numbers, because we are doing geoming and we haven't reached a very high pass rate, so the number is a little, little bit uh, skewed. But in general, like it's it's better than the default uh, JIT inductor. If you want to try it, uh, now it's available on the to PyTorch nightly, and um, please give it a try uh, if you if you feel interested. And we're also working on a, a tutorial, give more detailed instructions on uh, how to use it. And last but not the least, I want to take this opportunity to uh, thank the Intel PyTorch team for their contributions to the CPP wrapper code gen in Torch Inductor, which is a critical part of this project. And that uh, concludes my talk. If you have any questions. Ah, yeah. Like the the framework should be general. Like maybe there's some in implementation details need to be, need to be sorted out. But I think uh, it, it works, and also for CPU also works. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, I haven't, uh, in particular, compared the numbers with them. Uh, but the idea is, like, uh, once you export, I guess people can, can pick what, whatever they want to use. But the AOT inductor is more like Py, PyTorch native experience. So it's part of PyTorch. Yeah. Uh, the good question. So I didn't list the, the JIT mode uh, performance with CUDA graph. So that number is uh, quite comparable with AOT inductor. So I, I think the both because we, we reduce the Python overhead. The, the yeah. Uh, what's the major reason of uh, the figures from uh, torch events? Uh, what, what's the challenge there? Okay, that's a good question. So a uh, lot of the failures actually at this stage is actually in in the uh, torch export part. So we were not able to export uh, some models. Do you do things like uh, some, like let's say, uh, mutated uh, global attribute or things like uh, dynamic control flow, those kind of things? Yeah. So as I said uh, earlier, because we follow the principle that try to reuse uh, as much as uh, possible for, for the default inductor, so 
actually the problems like AOT inductor specific problems is not that many. Yeah. Okay, if there's no more questions, uh, this concludes my talk. And if you are interested in talk to me, I, I'll be in here. And thank you.